welcome back to my channel. My name is Melody and welcome to my Simple Valley home. In today's video, we're going to be doing a fun day in the garden. We're going to be planting a couple flowers. I'm also going to be doing some mulching and I'm also going to be giving you tips and tricks on how to prune your flowers and also how to feed them. And then the final thing that I'm going to be doing with you guys today is I'm going to give you a garden tour i love my garden it's a cottage inspired garden i literally built it from the ground up and i'm just excited to share with you guys all the inspirations on how to create your own cottage garden so if you enjoy gardening videos or just gardening in general please give this video a thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button grab your garden hat and let's get started One thing I love to do when starting my day of gardening, I love to gather up all my supplies and put it in my little red wagon. My dad got me this as a gift for Christmas one year, but I managed to snag one on Amazon for you guys. If you guys are interested, I'll leave it in the description box down below. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my plants in the backyard. I've uh, gathered up some snapdragons from Home Depot along with some other plants that were on sale during Memorial Day weekend. And it's always good to shop when there's sales just so it's easier on your pocket. More bang for your buck. Okay friends, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this plant over here. It just didn't do so well. I'm really sad to see it go, but you know what? Sometimes it just doesn't work out. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it with this plant that I got from Home Depot. It's called a tick seed. And this one, it looks like it loves full sun, it's hardy, it loves water, so which gets a lot of water in this area. And you know, I just wanted to really balance out the yellow in my container. Now my container plants, I absolutely love to use the three methods. Uh, it's thriller, spiller, and filler. So my uh, thriller is this beautiful purple fountain grass. My spiller is this different variety of sweet potato vines. I, for my fillers, I used um, some violas and some petunias over here as well. And I love these beautiful snapdragons. So we're just gonna go ahead and just add the balance in yellows. So before I went ahead and decided to plant this plant, most of the things that I love to use in my garden, especially to make things thrive and just survive, is my two key points in gardening. And one of that is, oh my God, I can't get enough, is this Aspona starter fertilizer. This stuff is amazing. I will leave a link in my Amazon shop down below in the description box. This stuff is awesome. The reason why it's so great is a slow reason fertilizer and it's really good for your plants in the beginning especially when you're planting this stuff helps before you do your main fertilizing every week and it just really helps especially during these hot summer times it gives it a good root system and anytime you want to plant a plant you want strong roots and this definitely helps that and I also love a good soil now I love miracle Grow, but I recently discovered Kellogg's organic potting soil and this stuff is amazing because it has manure in it and it's all natural so I can use it in my garden beds for vegetables and also my pots as well. To start off with I'm going to dig a nice deep hole and just add a really good handful of my Biotone starter fertilizer and just mix it up and then add my plant and of course deroot it. I always end up derooting my plants. I find that they can get a little bit crowded in the pots. Do you guys deroot your plants? Let me know. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and deadhead this little petunia over here. I love these flowers. They give out so much growth, they spill. They're considered a spiller plant in my garden or in this container as well. So that's why I kind of balance out the yellow over in these corners. So one thing that I used from YouTube that I absolutely thought that was genius, I was like, why are my petunias not coming back? Well, a lot of people, when they deadhead a plant, they automatically think, okay, let's just go ahead and take off the dead flower. Well, with petunias, you actually want to take off the base and the dead flower, just as so, and it will actually make your plants come back to life and just full and fresh and just keep reblooming. Okay, friends, I wanted to share with you guys the soil that I use in my garden beds for my vegetable gardens and also for my raised beds. There is a raised bed potting mix that you can use if you guys have like a raised vegetable beds, but for just anything involving my garden or any of my side plants in this little side area over here, I love to use the Amend by Kellogg's. This stuff is awesome because it's full of nutrients and it also has tons and tons of manure just like the other one that I shared with you guys before. It's just a really thick soil. It's very rich, it's very dark, and that's what you really want. Just that hearty soil that will really keep your plants moist and thrive throughout your garden season. 
Let's get to planting and these snapdragons are the perfect area in this space. They love full sun. I did like a little variety. If you guys enjoy gardening and also you have a green thumb, then please give this video a thumbs up. I would love to hear from you guys whether you guys enjoy these types of videos. But if you enjoy garden tours, then go ahead and go to my timeline and click on the next chapter, 13.36, and enjoy. If not, keep on watching for more tips and tricks on fertilizing and pruning. Okay, so I want to do some light pruning on this uh, container over here. I love these petunias, they're beautiful, but they're looking a little bit bare in the middle, and I want it to kind of be filled like this one, just like nice and full. And what I find is when they start to look a little bit leggy and then just not as full and fluffy like what we want it, the best thing is to do is just to prune it. And once I prune it, I'm not gonna have it sit in the full sun. I'm gonna have it just kind of away from the sun just for a little bit, probably about a good two hours before I put it back just because I don't want it to fry. So if you guys are gonna prune your flowers, just make sure that it's not in the peak of the sun time because you don't want them to burn because they'll have like fresh stems. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I prune my petunias just to make them full and fluffy. Um, it's starting to look a little bit bare again in the middle. So we're just gonna go ahead and just give it a nice quick trim, but not too close to the root because you don't want to like, you know, shock it. So just a nice little haircut. So this is a little bit, again, a little leggy. So we're just gonna go ahead and just trim it just, just so. So now that I trimmed it, it should come back nice and full, a little bit less leggy, and it should look something like this, what, like what we freshly planted, and hopefully it will fill in. So it takes about probably a good week or two to just to kind of fill in. Okay, I wanna go ahead and water that container that we just pruned just because I wanna make sure that it's not in shock. I'm gonna leave it in this area too just because it, right now the sun's going down so it won't be so hot for it so it will be able to kind of thrive and just take off later and it won't be you know burned and then shock. But before I water that container, I wanted to share with you guys my new favorite hose. This thing is awesome. I'm sure you guys have seen these at Home Depot and Lowe's, but I found mine on Amazon for half the price. And to be honest with you, it's like 100 feet versus 50 feet that you would find at Home Depot or Lowe's. And this hose is so cool because it doesn't kink. It's very strong. It's very lightweight. As you can tell, I can just like curl it up in the corner and I'm not like, you know, untangling this giant hose, especially they're super heavy when they are full of water and I just love this thing because it expands so I will leave this hose in my description box down below with the link if you guys are interested and I'm telling you once you have these things in your garden you will never go back to a regular hose I wanted to share with you guys one thing that I absolutely love to prune and it really needs maintenance and a lot of people think, okay, you know, just leave it and it'll come back. No, it is lantana. Lantana is very, very, very popular here in Southern California and it just does really well with our drought tolerant weather. And right now it's just kind of fizzling out. It still has some color here on the edges but I just want to give it a really good haircut and I will show you guys how to do that. I have that. a couple areas over here that we're going to prune, but I just pruned this probably about a week ago, a week ago, and it's already starting to come back a lot. So this is a purple lantana right next to my jasmine over here. So let's go ahead and get this, these pruned because they need a very, very good haircut. When pruning your lantana or any type of plant in your garden, you really need some sharp pruners and these are sharp. So be very careful guys. I will leave these in the description box down below. I got them from Amazon. So I went ahead and trimmed the top, gave it a good trimming. I also took the sides. I'm going to bunch it up and get rid of all the dead limbs, almost creating like a sphere like look. Now for the final part and handling my garden, I'm just gonna go ahead and do some quick mulching. To do that, I'm gonna do some cleanup just to get everything prepped and ready. I like to use my blower here. It's the most easiest way to get all that dirt away from my garden beds. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and grab the mulch. We're gonna bring it out front to the front beds. And I like to use the Scott's Pro Brown Mulch brand. Um, I get this from Home Depot and we just so happened to get it on uh, Memorial Day weekend, it was six bags for 10 bucks. 
and it was a really good deal. I highly recommend going uh, when they have sales just because it's you know cheaper, but more bang for your buck. But we ended up getting three extra bags for free because my husband was loading and there's some workers there that were so gracious enough to you know give these bags away because they were a little bit damaged. And usually this never happens, but these workers were like, hey, you know, it's free, would you like them? Um, so, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but that was really sweet of them. Um, but we got three extra bags for free and I'm not complaining. How about you, babe? Yep, three is always good. Yes. So always, you know, if you want, if you see some damaged bags, ask them if they will maybe give a discount or even give them away for free. You never know. So, um, cause most of the time they just sit there half empty and what are they going to do? They're probably going to throw them away. So it's always good to ask a worker to see if maybe they're given a discount or for free. So let's go ahead and grab this mulch. I have my lovely assistant here. My handsome assistant here are going to help me uh, grab these bags and put them up front. So let's get going on that. I don't know about you guys, but I am so thankful for my husband for helping me out with these heavy mulch bags. Please comment down below and let me know who helps you out in your garden. Is it just you or do you have a loved one helping you guys out as well? Okay, I'm going to do one last thing before we start the garden tour and I want to share with you guys my favorite plant food that I feed my plants. I'm going to go ahead and do this with my lantana because I just cut it back and I just want it to be a little bit more happy and healthy when it comes back in two weeks. I will mark the date of when I feed this so that way I feed it once a week and I'm going to use my favorite favorite plant food I'm going to share with you guys and that is Proven Winners. Um, I used to use miracle Grow, and I switched to Proven Winners. I will leave this in my description box down below in my Amazon shop. But I'm telling you, this stuff is so much better in my opinion just because it has iron in it and miracle Grow does not. So I do one scoop of this in my watery can and I fill this up with water. While I get my last plants, give a good drink here. I just wanted to let you guys know that Proven Winners gives you instructions on the back of the container on how much water each plant needs, depending on the size. Now let's start the garden tour. Let's start off in my entryway. In my entryway this year, I brought out my favorite wreath that I love to bring out every spring and summer, just a transitional wreath. I made this wreath probably about three years back and I just took an old clearance garden hose and stuck a styrofoam block in the middle and just stuffed a whole bunch of different types of florals. And then I got the birdhouse and the birds from Hobby Lobby. Most of the supplies was from Hobby Lobby along with Michael's. It was super easy, it's very inexpensive. Any of you guys can do it. All you need to do is just wrap the garden hose, put your styrofoam block in the middle, zip tie it, and then just stuff everything in the middle. It's so simple and very inexpensive. to my doormat I got my home sweet home sign a couple years back from Target I believe they still have it this gingham black and white uh, doormat is actually from Amazon I will leave it in my Amazon shop and my description box down below if you guys are interested I have my favorite two plants that I always love my snake plant and it is blooming or got new leaves coming through and then I also have my fern here. I believe this is called a, um, I will look up the fern name and I will leave it in the description box down below. But this is in a, a baby chair that I got from LA Vintage Market and it needs a little bit of paint, but other than that, it's super cute. It's just perfect for this space. Moving on to the side beds that we just planted, I'm just gonna go ahead and run through some of the, my favorite flowers that I have that's obviously really well for full sun and also shade. So starting off is a hosta. I love a hosta. I have um, some little buggies starting to chew on it, so I sprayed it with some oils that are neem oils, and I only do it at night just to make sure that they, it doesn't get burnt. 
Um, I also have a foxtail fern. I love using these around my garden. They are perfect for a little bit of sun and also some shade. I also have my foxglove. It's withering out, but I will probably reseed next year. And then I also have a finca. And then I have this uh, plant here. I think it's called an African lily. I will uh, double check on that. It gives out these beautiful, almost orchid looking like uh, flowers. And I will show you at the end of the flower bed. We just planted these snapdragons and they absolutely look so precious in this space. I absolutely love it. Just the variation that it brings also because it brings some height to this area because a lot of my plants are low besides my containers. And I wanted to share with you guys a really good ground cover, something that's very low maintenance. It takes off very quickly. And then it also gives you perfect amount of texture and blooms at the same time. And that is Ivy Geranium. I love Ivy Geranium. It has different types of florals that you can always bring to your garden space that just brings that perfect pop. And I wanted to also share with you guys in my bed that it's just a perfect amount of things to bring to your cottage garden. It's just to add different types of textures and also different types of garden junk, I like to call it. So uh, just bring something interesting to the space. So add a trellis and your side bed. You know, you never know. Usually they kind of go up against, you know, a fence. So you can add it against your house and it just brings interest. It's just something when someone walks up to your door, you're just you know kind of taken back by it it's just because usually it's just you know plants all along but you got to add different types of things so i like to add a lot of rocks in my garden beds just to create a little bit more texture i like to add signs as well so this is like a cute little stepping stone that was given to me by my friend and i love that it just kind of it's like a simple um almost like a concrete look so it just kind of blends in I also like to add a lot a, of different types of pots in my garden. It just creates that height and visual to the eye and your space as well. Such as that one over there. And then of course, my shaded pot. And I love oh, I forgot to show you guys that orchid. Let me go back. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? It just like, it's so different. And when it uh, gets little pods like this, you want to cut it off just so it'll create new blooms. But I'm going to let this one kind of wither out and then I'll give it a fresh cut. But they are super neat. They just kind of stick out at you and they even uh, bloom at night too, which is neat. They kind of have their own thing going on. So. My side yard this year I did a lot of different types of ferns this year usually I added hostas like a couple years back but I ended up doing some more of those foxtail ferns over here just because it does really well in the shaded space I also have a different type of fern here I wish I could know what this fern was but it was a gift to me I love a good ladder good garden junk in your in your garden especially when you want to create that cottage garden look you just the more junk the better <laughs> so I just have this ladder and I actually got it from work believe it or not my old job they were gonna throw it out when they were redoing the space and I was like you know what let me have it and I took it home and I was like you know I'm gonna put it in my garden and I'm gonna use it to decorate for holiday seasons such as Halloween and Christmas it's so much fun especially during uh, 4th of July I'm gonna put some stars up on this it's gonna look super cute but I just have some really simple pots here with some impatience and then I have like a little watering can that I got from Michaels I also picked up this cute little um, I guess you could call it I think it was a um, part of some type of closet or something and I got it from Long Beach and I brought it home and I was like you know what? I'm just gonna place it over here just to kind of dress up this wall because you know sometimes a brick wall isn't the best looking so I just wanted to kind of bring a little bit more elevation to this space just to make it kind of pop
Coming down to my fig tree, I have this little area that I love to decorate. I put some purple fountain grass over here just to kind of, you know, anchor this space as well. Um, I had for the longest time lilies and they just weren't doing so well, but these seem to be taking off and doing very, very well. Here's another type of ivy geranium. This was actually a clipping from my coworker that she gave me. She rooted it in a water, she put it in water and rooted it and brought it to me in a little tiny bag. It was super small, it was like this tiny, and this has taken off, believe it or not, in a year and a half. Look how beautiful and lush that is, and look at the ground cover. I'm just gonna let it kind of curl over here and just kind of really just you know create different colors especially during springtime oh my gosh guys the colors are so vibrant and beautiful then i have my bougainvillea over here along with another geranium and i just put it in a galvanized container again more garden junk i have this um i'm so 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 sorry i can't have my words today <laughs> this fence I've had this in my house on my wall for the longest time and I brought it out to my garden and I love to decorate it for Christmas time. I put different types of wreaths on it, kind of like my windows in my house. I love to decorate it for the holiday season. Uh, another galvanized container with some petunias in here as well. And then just my little bun buns. So this is this space over here. So let me give you guys a little overview of my garden. When I first moved into my house, it was grass everywhere. And they had a, um, I guess you could call it a rebate if you were to replace your grass with drought tolerant landscape for free. Because at the time, California was going through a drought crisis. And I just wanted to share with you guys, you know, if you have any type of rebate involving, um, you know, landscaping that's done by the city you get it done because it will turn out absolutely gorgeous and i will just give you a quick overview but then i'm going to go through some of the plants that are my favorite but this is how it turns out it is breathtaking over here i absolutely love my garden as you can tell I'll let you know when i got my landscaping done by the city i just had a couple plants in here picked out by them and the rest i put in so the lavender is one of them that I got, I picked out from them because I really wanted that cottage feel. I also picked out these lilies, of course. I love these lilies because not only because of the blooms, but it also has fullness and different texture that it brings into my garden. And lantana, of course, because it is drought friendly, it's easy to maintain. But the rest of the items, all my roses, all my geraniums, all my jasmine, every little thing in this garden, I installed myself. Some really good pollination plants that you should have in your garden, especially if you want a lot of blooms, a lot of different types of flowers that are just constantly need to be fed by the, you know, nature is, of course, lavender is one of my favorite, favorite staple plants in your garden. I obviously get mine a little bit too big. It's not the Spanish variety. It's a different type of variety that's here in California. I will try to find the type because it was given to me by the drought tolerant landscaping and uh, by the city. And so I'm gonna try to find out what it is, what type it is. But look at all the bees. Oh, they're doing their job, especially when it comes to springtime and summer. They're just all over the place in my garden. Tons of butterflies, tons of bees. And they just, it just gets so big. And I don't know if you can tell how massive this lavender bush is. It is huge. So another plant that I highly recommend also for good pollination is a good salvia. Salvia is so easy to maintain, not only again, because it brings those pollinators, you can cut this back during the winter time and it will come back full bloom during springtime and it will keep bringing these brand new budded stalks. So I, the ones that would be like, let's say that one's dried out, I would cut that back and new blooms would come. Sorry, I'm like, it's a lot of bees here. So I just want to make sure that I don't get stung. But look at all those brand new stalks and they're so easy to maintain and it just gives that beautiful purple color, that different types of texture that you need in your space. And I wanted to also give you guys a couple tips on your cottage garden. You know, there really is, the, the best way to create a cottage garden is just to create that really wild, 
full look. And so that's what I kind of did with my garden. I just kind of let things, you know, still keep it contained and pruned, but create that like full look and just add different types of elements in here that you wouldn't be expecting. A lot of people wouldn't be expecting this cute little container hanging. Or also I have rocks throughout my garden. I also like to put different types of pots. So this one was broken in half and so I added it here to make it look like it was growing out. And I have another one over this here. This one's really cool because it really looks like it's like, it just fell over. So I just, you know, is this really, there's no wrong. And what I really like about my garden too, is that not only you really have to go deep into it to really see things. So I know you're supposed to create that height in the back and then create lower going forward. But you know, with my garden, I just kind of plant whatever is a space and then I just let it be because I love going through here. It's different types of pathways and just areas that you wouldn't be expecting. Like each area is a different view for sure.